both of those games was that a fucking ed to a yeah it is yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah 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 <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan over there, that's Patreon, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron, two canes bifurcated for your pleasure. What's new, gentlemen? Yet another week, we got some things to talk about. Oh, there was some Intel drama with firmware. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. We're going to walk you through that entire timeline along with a new AMD announcement for all the video cards that, well, we can't afford, but hey, we want to look at them because they're shiny and pretty. Mm, 24 gigs of VRAM. Dude, uh, I want to live that 24 gig lifestyle. I've been playing around with a couple things. I got in a little A-B test. Uh, going back to some Firewire stuff, because I think I talked about last week, prices are coming back down. Things are getting reasonable. Always on the lookout for a good deal. And what I want to show, what I want to show to everyone is taking, let's say, a Focusrite interface from 2006 and comparing it against uh, the Generation 3 Focusrite audio interface. How much quality-wise, you know, like noise floor, EIN number, sample rate, uh, all, all the metrics that people like try to stack up like they can fucking hear it and you can't, um, stuff that only shows up on a meter. What the progress scale is, how does that look? It's going to be fascinating. So I got another firmware card in to kind of A-B test and uh, having a good time with that. Having a good time with that. It's going to be fun because people, are, you you want to generate some comments in YouTube, baby? This is going to do it. <laughs> this is going to do it. It's going to have some people who don't know what the fuck all they're talking about arguing. It's going to be glorious. But I did this too. We play Trackmania. So I made us a Trackmania page because a lot of people were asking like, hey, I got a bunch of questions. Guess what? I put all the answers on one page so I can just say, here's the link. Figure it out. So if you like playing physics puzzles, wheels and all that, twice a week, 14 new maps every Tuesday. Tells you how to get into the server. If you're a patron or if you're Twitch, instructions. It's got the schedule when we do the practice sessions and it'll convert it to your time. And when the server's just wide open, how to get into it, which is easy enough, but hey, maybe you don't know. And everything is there. If you do have any additional questions, feel free to ask him in our Discord server. Gentlemen, oh, and the soggy HDMI thing, by the way, I'm just saying this right now in case Jordan's video just disappears. That's because I cleaned out a tablespoon of tea from the HDMI splitter, and it's just kind of hanging on the HDMI cables like an SSD drive that you couldn't find the mounts for. Yeah. <laughs> or there's no, no roll of duct tape handy. That's only you know what you don't want to use duct tape. Use gaffer tape, and you might yeah you might need to upgrade that drive later on. Duct Gorilla tape, tape. <laughs> yeah. Velcro. Mm. Zip ties is like when you put a ring on it, though, wasn't it? Yeah, like mm. that, that. That's after that's the permanently um, there. Yes. Yeah. That's like when you, when you I, get the advanced I, engineering and you get the zip ties. I, I've 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 pretty much mastered the whole like stick the pin in the in the tooth of the zip tie to like reuse them. I don't know. I've uh, taken to buying spending spending the extra money to get the ones with the thing built into it. Ah, uh, yes, a little the, clicker the, the, on the other side. You just pull yeah. it down and just, yeah, the, 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 the release. <laughs> Especially See, if you yeah. put up something really nice and you're like, "Fuck!" Then you gotta estimate <laughs> everything. Yeah, you know. yeah that's, oh, that's that's off by like two degrees. Mm -hmm. Fuck, yeah. damn it. Well, let's go back and do that. Jordan, you're going to a concert, man. Like all the way on the other side of Canada. Yeah, I mean that that's gonna be in a couple months though, so I guess I have that to look forward to. This week though, back back to work. Uh, you know, as as usual, shit caught fire while I was gone, so that was that was uh, fun catching up. Um, and yeah, I started uh, Operation Bench Four Hundred Five Part Two: Dragon Chunder Undertaking. So hopefully, I don't know. Is that a D and D campaign or what? <laughs> no, that, that 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 is that is me trying to lift four hundred and five pounds off my chest. So hopefully that'll that'll be happening in the coming. How are you going about that? It's like a make and break thing. You're just like, okay, let's get it down there. Everyone, leave the room. All right. Oh no! I, well, last last time I had no spotters. This time I'm gonna have spotters so okay. that I don't accidentally decapitate myself. All right. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to roll 405 down. That, yeah. Huh. I, I, I you know I I got safeties. I can set them at a height, but like yeah, it's always good. Nice to have like a couple humans on each side to like Laugh. grab the thing. Yeah. Then think about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would never do that if you were spotting somebody and they were trapped under a bar. No, no, 
at least not for more than like five seconds. <laughs> you laugh at them after they've re racked and they can properly feel the shame and not the life leaving their body. What if you don't like them that much? <laughs> well, then, then they should just they... don't spot for them. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. Just say no. I'm not, not going to spot you, buddy. All right. How about you, Pedro Mateus? Anything new and exciting going on? Uh, exciting, not really, except the uh, microphone. Uh, I just I finished the team's meeting and the entire microphone arm came. Yuck! What the hell? <laughs> this was supposed to be a bit sturdier, and the microphone arm was in fact sturdier. The IKEA table that it's attached to, mm-hmm. not so much. Mm. Yeah, uh, there's a very clear mark on the table here of where it used to be, because yeah, the only bits where it's actually you could call it solid is the very edge, and the rest of it is effectively cardboard. Did so, you not? Uh, you can drill. Do the? Did you not get the attachment for like the through hole? Uh, no, I didn't get the through holes. This one is just the. Wouldn't, wouldn't that also be through the cardboard as well? So it's not that. Yeah, sturdy. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, it, now it's in the right place. Now it's where in, in a solid, ish bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's that weird so, composite wood thingy. <laughs> I, 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 look, I look forward to like at some random point during this episode, the the microphone just like crashing down in your crotch. <laughs> it's. I looked at the when I when I bought like this. Um, tabletop i um looked at the weight bearing capacity it's like 70 kilos like all right 70 kilos is plenty um i don't believe it anymore (laughs) i really don't (laughs) because this arm with the microphone weighs about four kilos so the fuck (laughs) there's certain things that you never want to test out like the load capacity for this plate glass desk that i have with these mm-hmm. micro uh, not microphones but these <laughs> two monitors stacked on a monitor stand on the edge of the desk i'm like tensile I'm, strength I'm taking your word on this man yeah th- there's also a stand holding the uh, the portrait monitor on the other side but yeah that's on the solid bit of desk too so yeah. all right <laughs> that's enough talk about these solid matters we need to get something a bit more goopy in this show. yeah I mean, there, there, there's plenty of goop to be uh, shared, and this time it's available in every language you can speak. It's the Steam Yeah, there's some, uh, there's some new translation stuff happening uh, on the Steam client now. Uh, so they have, uh, they now have uh, all the hundred odd languages they support. Uh, is now a search criteria. You can, um, and they have a couple of ways of managing that. You can set primary languages for your main preference, and you can also define more than one secondary language. So it'll it'll show you the the localization from those localizations if your primary language isn't available. You can also now search by language, and in your discovery queue, your language preferences will affect what games show up. So it will show preference to games that have translations in your particular localization of choice, which is always nice to be able to not have to like, like. When, when, I, when I'm playing a game that has, like, Xbox prompts with a PlayStation controller, like, that's enough translation to do in my brain. I wouldn't want to actually have to, like, read and comprehend something and then translate it to a language I actually do understand. <laughs> that seems like hell. So, yeah. Yeah, no, ma- major kudos and uh, shout-outs to the people in the uh, translator trenches uh working for valve effectively for the occasional free game sometimes a coupon that that's all you're getting uh so yeah no good job you're all uh doing a very very good job and yeah as someone who was in that position it's uh, annoying sometimes (laughs) couple of things man uh what are we getting um search for games translated indonesian slovak melee melee arabic hebrew serbian hindi and and more that is kind of neat that's uh, yeah. almost as cool as this November update because they fixed some of the issues with our big pictures, Jordan. <laughs> sort of, kind of. <laughs> well, they finally, finally uh, remembered to, oh yeah, no, maybe people uh, want that uh, hardware acceleration in hey, big picture. Hey, in my defense, I'm like, okay, I had this argument. If you don't know, <laughs> uh, last week they released uh, the Steam Steam Gamepad UI, UI. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for a big picture for your desktop. And Jordan and I cut it on it both. We have uh, UHD monitors on that particular screen. You're like, holy hell, that's slow. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. It's, now, it's, sli- it's, it's slightly less slow, although but, I, th- I think... But here's what I'm getting to. I made it a point. It's like, oh, some people have, might have disabled um, desktop acceleration. It's like, yes, well, I disabled that for a reason. 
<laughs> well, now it's enabled again, and uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can go back and disable it. But yeah, they, they very much would like you to keep that on because that is what's giving it a semblance of fluidity. And yes, it does use significantly less CPU now, uh, to the point where you can actually use it on a very, very low powered um, laptop with a dual core Ryzen with just using the Vega 3 graphics. So uh, it, it takes a few seconds on said laptop. You When you first launch it, it's a bit chuggy, but then it eventually catches up and it's usable. So what's the, um, what's the, what's the GPU on that laptop? I'm curious. It's just a Vega 3. <laughs> ve 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 Vega 3 and the, the yeah. screen is what, 1080p, 720p? 1080, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Cause like on NVIDIA at UHD, it was still very, very, very chuggy for me uh but hey they did add a button to quit big picture mode so now you don't have to kill your entire client if you want oh, to get man. out of the gamepad ui um and yeah if you hit and actually now if you hit the big what? picture mode icon it brings up the new one which is uh, thanks satan add controller types each you can optionally choose to use the nintendo style layout which will flip the a and b buttons and the x and y buttons which i've seen a lot of people asking about yeah uh a lot of people who are used to the switch or the game boy or the nintendo ds's yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. You don't want to alienate people in Japan who have been using that particular layout for years, not and just on Nintendo, but also on um, PlayStation, where the circle is to confirm and the cross is to go back. Also, I got I got to say, like, these Switch Pro controllers are actually really nice controllers. Are they like, $90 just, nice? They, you know what, cons they're 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 about as they're about as good as any other ninety dollar controller I've used. So <laughs> let, 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 let's 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 put it that way. We'll be diplomatic about it. All right, a uh, couple of new games this week, which is always surprising because we're definitely getting into the time of the year. People just don't typically release games, understandably so. But Space Tail, every journey leads home. That's right, Fido and Space two point five Ds of Wolf, Dog of War, baby. Um. I, I saw this at us going through it, and who is the uh, Guardians of Cosmo? Is that Cosmo? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the psychic dog. Yeah, those were the first vibes I was getting through this. But I mean, it's your standard, you know, atmospheric puzzle, you know, platformer and all that. Looks kind yeah. of interesting. But here's here's one thing I want to say. I just want to bring this up, like right at the get go. You know, the video looks nice and all that. What's up with these Windows only demos lately? And I'm not calling this game out particularly. Uh, you know, this is not this is not your problem, Space Tail, but we see game in game in game that will have Linux support, native Linux support, but Windows only demos. Yeah, I don't know. It is seems that like a demos Steam mechanism? May, like? May, no, because we we've seen we've seen native Linux demos before. I think what it is, it's just like an afterthought, right? Like you're gonna you're gonna spit out a demo as just like Hey, we need we need to have one on Steam just so that like we can have people try a one out the time game. thing that never gets yeah. updated, and then yeah. people point out in the Ooh. forums is like, "Yo, the demo has been updated for a while." You got to attack right. and, and, and so, that, that, not a that. At, um. And 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 so yeah, you 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 spit out the Windows demo, and then you forget that you may be supporting other platforms because you know they're less than one percent of your sales or something. Steam Deck. Yeah, but. Uh, this, this one seemed kind of interesting because you have like a there's like a detective mode thing to this as well where you can like use mm -hmm. the dog senses to solve pr puzzles uh, it's, it seems pretty neat and it's it's a little pricey 2279 Canadian it's on sale 20 percent off now for 1823 so what like 15 bucks us right now mm, I, more like 20 bucks <laughs> well, it's, right. it's, it's on sale but um, yeah, uh, it is on sale over here. It's uh, usually fifteen forty nine pounds. Yeah, it's fifteen ninety nine yeah. on sale. Oh yeah, yeah and twelve thirty nine on sale. But yeah, no. A uh, big thank you to the publisher and uh, also developer, uh, Long Term Games, uh, who uh, sent us some keys. So thank you very much. We will uh, definitely be having a look at that very very soon. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about skating, man? Because you know, I first saw this and I'm like, damn, where's my VR headset and a mountain bike? <laughs> That was right? my first that, thought. Yeah, you know, this this would be great to play on a mountain bike in the middle of the woods while you're while you're pedaling. Skate rifts, first person uh skateboarding simulator. Uh this one is designed to be kind of like a chill out and fuck around simulator. Uh no real scoring, just a big old island to explore with lots of ramps and rails and kickflips and stuff you can do. And um uh, the, apparently the map design is designed so that you can basically get to any part of the island relatively quickly and constantly have a new skate experience i don't know it looks pretty fun for what is arguably a five dollar game 
So uh, they, they do. You are going to need a controller for this. Uh, they say keep playing with keyboard and mouse is not supported. So oh. they really drive that home. It's like the first thing in this video. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> when you started, it's like no controller. And it's like, notice no controller. Like, what do you do? What are you hiding? What happens? <laughs> I think, you know, you say it's like VR. For me, this looks more like um, what I would consider more like a uh, like skate mania, like Trek mania type arcade you know, slalom stuff like that uh, versus like Tony Hawk and yeah, no, uh, Tony game. Hawk's and the skate games, usually a more third person or over the shoulder here. It's almost like, um, nineties, very, very high FOV first person skating game, which looks awesome. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, the graphics, yes, when, they're very, you know, low poly and very low it, texture, hey, but that's, it's that's open fine. GL, it's OpenGL <laughs> on Windows too, which is very yeah. uncommon. You don't, you don't see that a lot. Um, <laughs> right. and, and the graphics for what they are are absolutely fine. If you can make the game just be fluid and everything, that might actually work really, really well. So I am kind of curious. Do you and think it's a better love bucks, story than yeah. um, Skate Burp? <laughs> Pro- probably, but like, I don't know. B- based on what I'm seeing in the trailer, this basically looks like Dear Esther with kickflips, which yeah, not, it's not just necessarily a bad more thing. of a sandbox skate park rather than an actual game. I think yeah. maybe it depends on what the size of the open world is. Because if I start and I can see the other end of the fucking world, I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. that right. does seem to be the case. <laughs> there's a screenshot there. It's one side of the island all the way to the other. <laughs> there's there's apparently a lot of stuff in there though. So I mean, for five bucks, yeah. could be worth a look. Hey, that's the thing. Machine Gun Furries, man. Uh, one of our favorite things to talk about because it is... Uh, Go Jimbo! <laughs> ah, yes. The iconic trio of Suzy Uzi, Gunner Jimbo, and Mini Gun Floyd. Mini Gun Floyd. In the near future. Oh, no. I'm I coming for this. you. Sylvester Stallone, what? <laughs> you know, we, we had a... We, I mean, we still have a good time with... um. What is the... Uh, bro... Uh, bro... Bro Force, yeah. Bro Force, yeah. That, I mean, that's fun. This isn't that. Not at all. This, this is... Uh, who remembers the arcade game Guerrilla War? No, kinda, I, I, I look at this and see Contra. Kind of has yeah, that vibe. It's There's very your Contra-y. Gorilla War right there. Like, <laughs> almost directly. Then we got some battle boats going on. And yeah, it's got a little side of Contra on it with your side action. And one thing it doesn't, you know, it's aping on uh, those two genres. Both of those games, was that a fucking Ed 209? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> It's got that authentic late 80s NES plagiarism that is rampant for all those games. Hey, don't worry. It's got a Windows demo. <laughs> okay, but it's 11 99 <laughs> And it's just your top-down arcade shooter. Here's the thing, though. I mean, you know, going up against, like, Guerrilla War, you know, pulling up heavily from that, and along with Contra, pulling heavy. Two games that had at least local coop. This, mm. not even that. No, 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 Suzy Uzi <laughs> Minigun Floyd fanfic. Yeah. How about pounding Sid Chip soundtrack? All right. That's, that, <laughs> that, that appeals to the M Fox dogs in the audience for sure. I Vulcan don't capable. Pound your Sid Chips, kids. <laughs> yeah, you, th- this requires, you know, Vulcan acceleration due to the, the insane <laughs> graphics. Ultra realistic. <laughs> You know, we used to joke about 2D games using uh, utilizing Vulcan and yeah, it's, we it's, are, it's, right? Yeah, I mean, but I mean, like, hey, it's perfectly valid. You need to push sense. pixels on the screen, yeah. screen, right? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's a, a, a very efficient way to do it, as it turns out. <laughs> it looks interesting. I'd love to see something like this because you know it's a little bit depressing when I'm like, well, hey, look, let's drag out the uh, remote play together. It's absolute rubbish, but I like, can't even drag that out. I'm like, this is nope. like single player. <sighs> It's to replicate the experience that most people had being in their rooms with their Nintendos and just playing Contra late into the night and maybe, then having their parents shouting you. at them like, you gotta sleep. Maybe so. you, Leatherface Mateus, but like Contra was always that game you broke out when you had somebody over and you're like, hey, do you think, do you, I played you, a lot of games on oh, my own. My, my, oh, my, there my hands go. There, there's drippy, there's drippy. the HDMI <laughs> well, uh, What I was going to ask was, um, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Ah, um, how did you? That, that, it dripped right, right from the HDMI cable into my ear, into my brain, and now <laughs> I can't think of thing anymore. Delicious, delicious tea. One game update that you know we've. Oh, uh, that, that, oh. That, that's what it was. Uh, do you think this game supports the Konami code? If you punch in up, up, down, down, left, right, <laughs> left, right, BA, start, select, what happens? What's the over? What under? browser and what web page does it take you to? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just probably the homepage for the game, man. <laughs> it takes you. Oh, better take it to like uh, Konami's like Pachinko division yeah, machines. Yeah, it just, it just it just starts up like Windows Pachinko. I don't know. Oh man. 
We need to bring that back. That used to be on several websites had a Konami code that you could punch in to just watch it do bizarre things. I think the first site I ever saw was like the original Dig. Mm. Way back when. Sonority. Yes, we did throw chairs at this one a while back, and uh, yeah, we, we all had that moment uh, right at the start. It's like, the hell am I doing? Uh, well, uh, some of that guesswork is uh, has been removed. They've added new tutorial graphics and texts to facilitate the understanding of the gameplay mechanics for novice users. I wouldn't necessarily say we're novice users, considering how many games we've thrown chairs at, but even then we were like, the fuck are we doing? <laughs> So yeah, yeah the, no. the, the 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 music puzzle thing definitely took a minute to grok. Yes. Yeah, may, may, maybe maybe a little bit of a better explanation for that. Um, Carl. They added discs, uh, disc space and yeah. performance improvements because clearly someone tried to hands. play this on their Steam Deck and they went, okay, maybe this is a little too big for what it is. We but, can make this a bit smaller. <laughs> but they did add an ultra high quality, folks, because guys, guys, get ready. This new fucking AMD card is coming out. It's got 24 yeah. gigs of VRAM, man, and you can run Sonority at 8K <laughs> at like 160,000. Frames a second, so you got you gotta, you gotta turn FSR. on that up. Yeah, so you gotta turn on the ultra high quality. You know, as far as like puzzle games go, I mean, I didn't absolutely hate this one. I'm like, yeah, it gets oh, the no. job done. I mean, as long as you could look past, uh, you know, Rocket, uh, not not Rocket Raccoon, like, uh, mm-hmm. because you could definitely you tell that they tried to put some thought into a story and all that. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, like, and, and, and like actual, actual like music notation and like music theory is a puzzle solving yeah. element. It's, it's not mm-hmm. a bad idea. Yeah. Like as, as a gameplay mechanic. Sure. Do um, you think this would work on a deck? I mean, Pedro, could you see your like, how do like puzzle experience games? Like it seems to have had my deck. This one like, would probably require if you're out and about with your deck, you're going to need headphones, which uh, the one other deck that I've seen <laughs> out in the real world, uh, the person was playing it uh, sitting in front of Tesco's. It's like 14 year old kid. Uh, uh, and they did not have uh, headphones and they were blaring that speaker. <laughs> Ah, so, so people, people are just doing that more. People, I, I don't know. If our, don't be a deck hole. Fa- no, I mean, fashion? that's the same. Like, um, man, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, if we're on, I'm not usually on public transit, but even if we're just like walking through a fucking store and somebody's walking around going rah, 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 like that, I will ask you what the fuck your problem is. Do your fucking yeah, that, face just to the, see what you have to say. The headphones are there. <laughs> that's, what that, that's what I use the little hole at the back of the, uh, the deck's case for. It's where you store your headphones. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I guess we're done talking about Got sonority. Got that shit cleared up. By <laughs> yeah. Coming up next. Turns out the only way you can update your Intel GPU firmware is if you install a new AMD GPU. It's time for the news, but you know, in true LGC tradition, we need to uh, put the kibosh on whatever momentum we happen to have, and uh, basically thank all of you. Just turn R. the R. camera right me. around. <laughs> turn your camera right around and put it directly at yourself, like cameras usually do. But whatever, don't think about it. I'd certainly what point, point your camera at the wall. Yeah, you're, you're kind of leaking, man. Like, you can stay <laughs> away from through, Pedro's through, windows. Through the window, don't, through don't, the walls. Don't put more thought into that than I did, the, which wasn't very much. <laughs> Till the sweat drips <laughs> off C-920. our patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. You should go there. Give us money. <laughs> uh, get access to cool stuff like our Discord channel or uh, our SPP to game streams. Uh, you can do all that stuff by subbing to us on uh, Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. But Patreon's what we're talking about now. You can get access Patreon. to the show notes. Show notes, uh, you can get... Is that the, like a patron? It is. If you, you can be a patron of the arts via Patreon. Our, our arts. Our farts. farts. That's, <laughs> f- yeah, pa- patron of the farts. That's what I said. Oh no, you've, um, ca- you've contracted cursor. It's spread. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it's whatever, on Jordan this week. Yeah, right. <laughs> whatever am I going to do? So yeah, uh, get access to uh, videos early. Ven puts out the interfacing Linux stuff. Uh, you get to see the early versions of those in Discord it's as back. well. Hi, cursor. I go on. Uh, yeah, we got. I don't uh, have a got, monitor uh, on it anymore. I'm guessing. Uh, you, okay. You're, you're, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep, keep yourself entertained. We got Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. We got Borderlands 3 on Thursdays. Join me. I had to do boss fight all by my lonesome. It sucked because all the enemies are HP sponges and I need someone to draw fire for me. So Go play with uh, Jordan. Everyone, but what happened to Strider, man? I thought you and Strider were doing it. 
Stra- uh, Strader said he wasn't apparently he had like traveling shit. Joe said he was going to show up, but he got called late for work. I don't know. Uh, shit happens. Shit happens. Uh, right. Happens. Like <laughs> I, I can't, I, you have re- real life got to take priority. How dare you don't come to our discord <laughs> at seven 30 on a Thursday and play video games with me for 90 minutes. Yeah. You completely monsters. unlike track mania. You guys better be there. Yeah, or or else. Uh we we got a store as well. Store.com. Buy yourself some filthy LGC merch. We got t shirts. We got hey, we got man. tote bags now. I brought Ooh. some new stuff back. Frank's back just in time for November, man. Uh Fr- Frank Vember. No no Frank November. Dude. No Frank <laughs> November, baby. Uh we got all the new merch. Do we do we got do we got Frank mu- muscle shirts? Got it's Hell eventually Oaks. gonna load. I don't know. Our, yeah, see. Yeah, w- women's that. flowy tank top. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's okay, it's a husband yeah. beater then. There you go. <laughs> it's not a cult, probably. Uh, we got Witch Stones as well. Head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. You can buy stuff off of there, and you can send us little little love notes that we got to read for you live LGC on air. Pedro's list. Pedro, what is that? What do you want Green Ram for, you fucking hipster? I want the lowest profile possible DDR4 Hipster. RAM for a thing that I'm working Hipster. on. <laughs> uh, Jordan's still got a belt, some chairs, some green things, and R4 SDH set. What is that? Is a it's, it's, weird ass looking fucking SD card. It's it's literally just a cartridge <clears throat> that takes an SD card for a Nintendo DS. That's oh, it. okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. I got things. Uh, pay no attention to the red green hipster ram on our uh, studio zone as well. Because <laughs> hipster, <laughs> listen, Linux hipster cast right here, right now. It is a thing. We do thank you for your support. It's kind of brilliant. And look, hey, we're not running ads on Twitch either. I hate it when that happens, man. Like, get it's Twitch time Turbo. for an ad break, dude. <laughs> I'm like, get Twitch Turbo. Twitch doesn't even mention it, man. I don't know how they even turn a profit on that, but that just gets rid of the ads. That's Probably because they don't. <laughs> that's, that's the sad reality of yeah. it. But <laughs> they're, they're not terribly bothered because Big Daddy Bezos is a uh, funding. Yeah. <laughs> For so, now, AMD yeah. announced the thing, and we were all excited because we we've been patiently waiting. Nvidia did their thing. <laughs> I, I, Intel so kind of did their thing. And then we're like, okay, hold. Let's see what AMD has to say. Yes, and what they have to say is marginally impressive. So we got the announcement yet um, on Thursday. Uh, it was for the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT, both with some pretty impressive uh, memory units. They got uh, 24 gigs on the XTX, 20 on the uh, XT. Uh, shit ton of stream processors. There are lot, lots of red bars on their graph. Uh, dual AV1 encoders. All sorts of fun stuff coming to a scalper near you this December. <laughs> um, for for the low low price of eight ninety nine and nine ninety nine USB USD respectively, which I would you know I was hold, I was holding out. I saw the I saw the forty eighties. I saw the forty nineties. I'm like I'm not impressed by the price performance. Let's see what AMD has. Mm-hmm. And it's still thirteen hundred dollars Canadian on the low end. So that's really rich for my blood. I guess we got to wait on the digits for the seventy eight hundred and seventy seven hundred. But what I, what I really want to know is because you know XFX makes these uh, these cards right. So if we're gonna have an XFX ITX XTX or will forever be ATX. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I watched the entire thing like you guys did. We kind of had a you know viewing party in our Discord. Everyone on Discord, Discord was watching, go. yes. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, the thing that really made me go, wait a minute, what's going on? What's going on here? They never really compare it to anything from the our competitor. So yes. what we're left with is having to extrapolate, and that's what somebody did. <laughs> tech, this, power mm, <laughs> tech power up. Tech power up. 1.7 times faster, which kind of gives us an idea. So let's say, you know, Cybertruck 2077. Mm. How much faster, you know, let's say the, what's what's the big bad boy, the 6950 XT? Yeah, that's the, the biggest yeah. trucker. Right. <laughs> and, you know, that's doing 39 FERPs. The 4090 is kind of doing 71, but the 7900 XT XX is 66. Extrapolated value from the 1.7X yeah. faster that they claim. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I mean, this is going to be maybe not a 4090 competitor, it's clearly because it'll fit in a regular case, but uh, yeah, maybe but a 4080 need a new, competitor, yeah. right? Doesn't need a new power supply either. The 4080. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that oh, was yeah, the other they were thing throwing is. some shade. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh man, that was like the, 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 that announcement was like, oh yeah, you don't have to register for an account to install your drivers. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we you don't, don't need, need a new case. Stand. Don't need a new don't power need a new supply. Power... Don't need yeah. to use uh, questionable adapters. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 were they were they were really they really had the ammunition, and you know it was it was kind of in, in, in or Nvidia's fault, right? Like, well, you know when when you yeah. ta- when you're taking swipes like that, it brings a really fucking hollow when you don't like show some real benchmarks. But, yeah, that, for, I for mean, sure. it's their presentation. Even if they did show some benchmarks, they would be questionable. Like everything yeah. else, wait for the third party reviews. Is, yeah, <laughs> Pedro, that makes it even worse when you don't even have questionable benchmarks. Like we have <laughs> nothing. The, the, then you have the Intel uh, thing with the fifty eight hundred X three D being just a little brown line on I the ground. I will take fanfic over nothing, and that's what I got from this. <laughs> now, here's the thing, man. Yeah, the AV one encoding is there, so now we just got to wait on you know tubes and Twitch. Unfortunately, we don't have to wait on the Facebooks or the Metaverse or whatever it's called because that's already been enabled on that side. However. I think I can speak for all of us. We were equally disappointed at the pricing of these because they made a big deal. They made a big deal of saying, hey, this thing's sub $1,000. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, what, 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 one penny less. It's technically <laughs> yes, correct. One whole dollar. Yeah, so, he, he, all, all these are made with a percentage of recycled GPU. Zero. Zero is a percent. Uh, <laughs> dude, I mean, AMD and NVIDIA really want like the new normal to be like, oh, our top tier $1,000 minimum opening. Yeah, yeah uh, I really uh, thought that they were going to go for the 1099 for the uh, XTX because the uh, 6950, when that came out, that was 1099. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, so now, the high end is probably going to be that <laughs> my, my 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 pessimistic guess was actually a hundred bucks on top of what they proposed so it's actually not as bad as we hoped but i also saw today that there's a 6900 xt on sale for 800 bucks so i could just canadian so i could just mm. buy that i'll, well, I'll lose out my 1.7 percent performance but at least i'll have it and i won't be poor so the, you know we played the under and over in discord live and i nailed the 999 because that was mm. like of course like it's going to be under at 1000 i'm like no oh, 999 the other one i was hundred dollars off you know 799 yeah. like okay maybe you got some but still too rich for my blood no matter how you want to go with it and um are are w- 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 Am I alone? We're just all sitting around going, why don't you release the cards for the regular people? Like <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> release that, the cards that, that people will that, actually buy, please. That, that, that's kind of <laughs> it. Like, if there isn't a, a, an announcement or something in, like, the next two weeks, they're like, oh, yeah, here's the 7800 and 7700 for something you can actually afford. Like, what, yeah. what's the entire fuck? That's the fight I'm interested in seeing, man. You know, that that's what I want to see. Oh. It's and, like the 3070, 3060 Ti and... Yeah, the 4070 and then yeah, maybe that unlaunched 4080. Or are we going to see this? Because, hey, let's face it, you know, <laughs> Intel showed up and like, we're competing with last gen's low end with our top end. They're like, oh, well, you patted well, on the head. Now, hang on. Well, was right. attempt. Do, do you think both AMD and NVIDIA, this go around, hear me out, is content with letting just the last gen be the low the new low end We're like yeah this I, is we're just yeah, gonna make I, these two top ends and like hey you guys can fight over the spare parts on the 30 series or the 6000 series like go for it i, I don't think that's actually going to be the case but i'm pretty sure i wouldn't be surprised if they let us fight over it for a little while before they mm-hmm. come out with the uh before they come out with the lower end and stuff well like nvidia is going to do something because there's a lot of 30 series stock now you know, for sure yeah. yeah they've already yep. bought that capacity and they got those chips they got to make cards their aab partners do and you know ah. yeah and you know and, and and now especially that those are eight gig cards competing against like 12 and 16 gig ones like shit, right let's yeah because that's the thing that amd actually did right just slap the gpus full of vram and yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting. it is Another interesting thing. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Intel inside, but this time, can you update your can you update your firmware? Question mark. Right. Well, let, let's let's explore because apparently this is a more complicated question than initially than we initially thought. This one places. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go through the entire timeline. This all yes. gets broken off when um, Richard Hughes tweets back. Uh, who? Let's cover this. Fronix was attempting to uh, play around with the Intel Arc in the Power Nine. Or mm-hmm. it's power architecture. I don't know if it's power night particularly. And Richard writes in, he's like, hey, on the thread, it's not going to be updatable 
Without the CSME functionality, the ARC card firmware is updating using HECI over MEI, which means it's only available on Intel machines. See, you know, he's maintainer FWUPD, which you might know for updating your firmware. So let's navigate forward in our timeline. And, you know, of course, we head over to the uh, FWUPD web zone. And of course, the, you know, it, it just says non Intel machines are not able to update. Okay. Now, again, this could mean because Intel's turned into a generic word, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And ours had an up, you know, they posted an article they're like, yo, it only, you can only update the firmware and the ARC GPUs with an Intel TM, you know, inside. And that's been updated, Pedro. Yes, it has because uh, Intel, the Intel graphics team, they actually replied to the um, original thread that Richard Hughes started. And the, their statement was, uh, Intel Arc doesn't require the host CSME to update the firmware. Uh, firmware updates work on both AMD or Intel platforms. Arc has its own graphic security control for firmware updates, leveraging existing technology like H, uh, HECI interface protocol, uh, to implement the firmware update flow. So basically, as it turns out, the limitation currently, if we are to believe what Intel says, uh, is on FWUPD and the way that it um, basically does the graphics firmware update because the plugin is made to use the Intel management engine, which is only available on Intel processors. So technically... Yes, he is correct because of how FWPD is implemented. So then, uh, later on in the thread, after Intel have commented that, he says, Note that Intel MEI driver depends on x86, so my original point was more about it never being able to be used on power architectures, but my original comment was wrong to say that CSME was required. Much what? ado about nothing. And yeah, so... <laughs> also to back it up, and he's like, well, we have fuck all idea of this. Even ours is like, we have fuck all idea if this is ever going to work on Linux, though. So. Yeah, and, and I think uh, here, here the, the thing there is, especially um, especially uh, given what we know about, like, Intel's graphics offering, the fact that, like, they only expose... Or the, the Intel engineers who are working on this ostensibly uh, or submitting patches to FW update D they're probably thinking, yeah, these th cards, they're only ever really going to be in our data centers, right? That's, that's what we're, that's what we've been told internally. So the servers, not, I mean, there are a bunch of them running on AMD CPUs now, but. But even then uh, it, it makes sense that they only uh, accounted that because Intel GPUs were built in with the CPUs for however yeah, many years. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, my, my my first reaction was like this isn't surprising but it's not or it's but it is disappointing and well, this is the whole thing we had this yeah. conversation in the pre-pre super shows but go back and listen to the entire thing yeah. if you're a patron but now i would have said you know hey amd's new gpus require psp to update the firmware from amd and everyone I'm like bullshit whatever fuck off like we we need to investigate yeah. further you flip this and you go intel has set this to only update with ivy and it was like yeah, that sounds like some shit Intel would yeah. do, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I, 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 I believe, believe that. It, it, it's it's an easy pill to swallow, and yeah, I, I, that, that's that's what you got to watch out for, right? Is I think I think we've been we've been battered and abused by the industry so much that like when when you say bad things, it's like yeah, no, that's probably true, even if it's not. Mm -hmm. Like we we we've, we've been conditioned to expect that absolutely they would twist the knife more. Why wouldn't they? I don't know. <laughs> Although. I mean, I want to know things like this, though, Pedro. I want to know whether or not I can update the because this is 2022 heading into 2023. I want to be able to update the firmware in my card. And Intel, you need to yes. work with that. You need to make sure that works for Linux and it's ease. Now, I understand your current generation, even your top end, are fucking curiosity cards. Nobody's actually buying them to use. They're buying them to like, hey, let's see what we can make it do. Huh? So... Yeah, no, it, it absolutely needs to be fixed. And if FWUPD is what we use to update the firmware, then that needs to be changed uh, so that the graphics firmware updating portion or plugin doesn't require the manage management engine to be present. Uh, yeah. And I, I think, it, it's not I think on the GP on, on on CPU anymore, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And I I, th I think that's really what it what, what it boils down to is like people like if this if this was a thing that was or as originally presented this was like more of a you can never actually update your firmware on your uh, Intel GPU, but now, now there, normally there's, with there's, a video card is that a big deal? Because usually, usually usually no, 
Raise your hands, right? Like with your NVIDIA, it's like what version of firmware are you running on NVIDIA? Or whatever the fucking chip with. Uh, There's because- been very uh, common instances, especially with AMD drivers on Windows, mm-hmm. where uh, the driver package will include an updated VBIOS. Now, but, but, here's but, the, here's but, the, but still, but I still, think like the big I'm, shock with this, the big shock was this is this is Arc, man. That is, you know, it's going to need some like legitimate updates, right? Oh yeah. Oh I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely. And I, I think like like I was saying, the uh, the main the main um, the main negative negativity about this was like the notion that this would never be updatable. Period. But you know mm-hmm. now now that we know that this is actually just an x86 thing and not and even an Intel now. only thing. And uh, even there, there's now. the possibility exists to provide a facility. Yeah. Even though Intel has come out and said and that's not the case, my only reaction is show me. <laughs> that's yeah, all may, i will maybe, comment on that may, like, maybe hold out on it. buying that arc gpu until until we there see we that go. update. yeah there we go super tech script yes uh it's finally out you know the big update with vulcan but you may want to hold off on Aww. that uh <laughs> there's uh yeah there it, it's there the vulcan render is there they also restored uh mac os support for versions 10.14 uh or higher or sorry, lower, and the uh, soccer fields. If you're playing uh, soccer mode, uh, they actually introduced like the uh, the lines, the midfield lines, and the lines around the goal. Which, when I thought about it, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. That way, you don't have to rotate the camera. You can just see the lines to have an idea where you are no, in the field. No, Pedro, you play it like we all do right? with a <laughs> minimap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yeah, it is. Uh, it's out uh, version one point four. You can go and download it. Uh, you'll have to pass. Um, what is it? Uh, dash dash graphics dash render equals Vulkan for Vulkan and uh, OpenGL for the regular mode. That's just a default anyway. So um, yeah, I launched it on mine. It is. I, I use the app image like a normal person these days. And uh, woo, the Vulkan is. Uh, no, we're not, not Vulkan's great, but. This is just like the scaffolding. This is brutal Johnson. <laughs> like we got it working. You can technically play the game. Just don't look at because none of the lighting or anything like that is in the game with the Vulcan. We didn't right recompile now. the shaders from uh, HLSL to. <laughs> it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So for, like for the aesthetics, you probably still want to use OpenGL. Uh, for me, it's kind of weird though, man, because you know, I launched it with the app image, and I'm using an NVIDIA 3060. It didn't like it launches in a four by three window that had like manually resize, mm. like with the um drag and prey method, and like that's different and unwanted. <laughs> you can still define it. <laughs> no, I can't. No, no, oh, not even me. I didn't actually try and Vulcan mode to reset the uh, I, resolution. <laughs> I, I didn't go that far. Like, um, I mean, I mean, but here, here, here's the important thing in this update is that now there are lines on the soccer map so you can strategize when you're playing Super Tux soccer. I've mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, it bears repeating, right? That's that's really all we play Super Ducks card for, right? I just look at the mini map then and like try to aim towards the ball. What we need is a fucking camera rotation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like add that. That'd be kind of brilliant. So we I think we all want like things to play around with and like in the arm territory. Like X eighty six is cool and all, but it's always been, you know, if it it used to be risk, right? Like, oh, uh, wait, are we, we not doing about heroic? heroic? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, before I, we I get do, to I do want to talk bits, about arm. I do want to talk about. I arm, know. But, I thought maybe yes. we were going to slide into it and be like, oh, we'll just come back to heroic. We're like, Arr. <laughs> well, you should have mentioned that before. Uh, or but mo- yeah, move no, it in uh, the notes. Yeah, uh, heroic uh, two point five point zero beta two <laughs> is now available, um, and uh, <laughs> it. There's a lot that they actually, from the move from uh, beta one to beta two, actually has quite a few changes. Uh, and the big one that jumped out to me was fix the issue with gamepad losing focus when navigating to other pages. Ah, so it's actually usable on the Steam Deck now. Neat. Okay, I don't have to smudge the screen just because I happen to click on the options and now the gamepad doesn't work anymore. So that's 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 very nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the most mostly this is just uh, fixes leading up to the release because this is uh, beta two, uh, but they did add two more themes and uh, they smoothed out the workflow for specifying where cloud saves are, which is again I really like this feature. I like that they're actually <laughs> integrating that, and I wish uh, I wish more games on Steam would take advantage of the fact that you can synchronize your save files. <laughs> 
yeah no valve seriously proton just you can in the proton uh prefix you can absolutely uh tell which files were created after the proton fix itself was created so those are the save files you could easily have cloud saves for literally every game that doesn't support it because you can work out which files are different please what being a filthy person <laughs> only play linux native games pedro <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is about playing on your Steam Deck, man. Where if you want to like pick I mean, it, pick up the, it where you left off. That's kind of yeah, that's kind of the thing. The other thing that they fixed that's very clearly a Steam Deck focused is launching GOG games added to Steam and other shortcuts. It's like, oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> everyone can, likes a deck. <laughs> can, can you install the GOG launcher through Lotris? The Galaxy client? Yeah, maybe. I uh, I don't know if Galaxy. There was a time that it didn't launch on Linux at all. I don't oh. know if that's been fixed. I honestly haven't looked. <laughs> Strider, stop sleeping on the plane and get back to us. No, real quick. don't do it. So, before I was leading into this ARM64, do you think it's going to be, yeah, we're always going to be able to 64, but we're not going to see. 128 bit? Yeah, there's not a need for it, right? No. I mean, <laughs> Let's double up those registers. Yet yeah, again. <laughs> I'm like, practically, like, probably not, but. What I was saying is like, have you guys just not found it fascinating? Like something other than x86, a different architecture, you know, Raspberry Pis, it's cool to play around with that. Like Pegasus systems back in the day were always fun to play around with. And if you grew up with, um, you know, micro, micro PCs back in the day or Amigas, things like that. But Jordan, do you think ARM is going to be in our future? x86 is going to die in, let's say 2024, right? I think, I don't know if x86 is going to die. It's going away. (laughs) <laughs> I think we're going to like live in this weird hybrid future where there's like a lot of emulation where tools like this are going to become super fucking handy. Uh, like FEX, they got a new release out 2211. Um, this is a x86 emulator for uh, ARC64. And uh, there's some pretty now it cool. That does x86-64 as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this is the big one because you already had yep. Box 86, which only did 32 yep. bit, and Box 64, which only did 64 bit. Yep. This does both. We've, <laughs> yeah, we've talked and we've talked about uh, FX before. It presents uh, it prevent it presents to the uh, to the host binaries as a um, as a Linux 5.0 kernel. Uh, it doesn't require any sort of containerization. It can just have like native. It doesn't require ch roots. You can just have native file system support. Uh, but yeah, the cool stuff in this release are they implemented better segmented register support, which improves 32 bit performance in uh, benchmarks by about four percent. It's not much, but it adds up over time, um, especially because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of 32 bit applications that are still out there. And uh this this one is really neat because uh uh there there's a there's a larger technical explanation for this, but basically shit was completely broken uh in the in the 48 bit address space. Uh uh where um uh Proton 7 and later would not run. Um because of how uh, because of how uh, Proton does memory management, apparently this was just broken. Period. So when they fixed it, this was this uh, this got fixed for uh, Proton Experimental and later. Uh, but now ARM kernels running in a 48 bit address space can now run Proton Experimental properly. So you can uh, we we got that screenshot of God of War running on an ARM CPU at like it's straight up running Snapdragon, um, Snapdragon 888. 888. Yeah, yeah, AAA, <laughs> yeah. which you know, we're not saying. Maybe that not was, not at like sixty frames a second, but well, like the fact in all that you fairness, can, it may may have renders. not rendered the second frame of that screenshot <laughs> quite yet. Yeah, <laughs> but but the menu renders and it got in game and it was rendering at least that one screenshot was rendering correctly. So that's impressive. That's genuinely freaking impressive. And it's when you think of like the Rosetta bits that Apple did first from the move from power PC to X86 and then from X86 the to their Rosetta new two. Arm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. So when Apple finally stops supporting X86 altogether, Rosetta is just going to die and that's not going to see any development. This, this is the kind of translation, the long, uh, the long-term fix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tech that will have that even has a, most remote chance of having proper performance. So awesome. That that is genuinely awesome. <laughs> well, what, maybe we'll have oh, they, they got they add one other feature here, which is the groundwork for AVX simulation. Which yes. there's uh it's a lot of the uh the video encode decode stuff that uh uh CPUs have. So yes. getting getting that uh getting that like actually functioning again actually can get you in games, which again crazy to think that this is running on like snap hundred yeah. percent double down on not really playable, but the fact that we're getting the groundwork, this is the underpinning. This is stuff that gives you a little a little bit of an ease 
when you think yeah, of the future in the long term, you know, the migration this is like away from like city point six. zero one, right? Like, hey, we got a mm-hmm. Windows binary running, right? Like, holy shit, this is crazy. Well, I mean, you got to think about it. You know, Pedro, you were describing, you know, starting off with the risk going to x86 and coming back to ARM64 with Apple, how they had to do that. Do you think we're going to end up, you know, hey, x86 is going to move to ARM, then, oh shit, what's this? x96, what the fuck? We're x87, to- <laughs> x88, x69, I mean, baby. At one point, there will be uh, processors will be powerful enough that we will probably be able to emulate x86 on entirely 64 bit or 96 bit or 128 bit or whatever the case happens to be um, architecture. I, I yeah, <laughs> we have backwards compatibility. What about second backwards compatibility? <laughs> what, 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 but but does it work with sixteen bit four eighty six? No, go away. Uh, can you play sixteen bit Windows games on your ninety six bit uh, CPU yeah. that's running ninety six bit Linux? Yeah, <laughs> can you even update your Intel Arc GPU? <laughs> Oh shit! Now you got to think about like, yeah, one, yeah, wow, interesting yeah. times, interesting times. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Well, coming up next, we're throwing chairs at Dome Keeper because we got to keep our domes, or else it's gonna Made get domes. Dumped. Welcome back to the Chair Position. This is where we take a game, run on a bunch of different Linuxes, and. Uh, give it a highly scientific dome, protective dome of, of chair-based security. Uh, one chair means that it's an inferior dome that will not withstand a single monster. Four chairs means that is it is the strongest dome in history, comparable to the Atlantis sh- City Shields, because that's a reference that people get. Uh, this week, we're taking a look at Dome Keeper by Bippin' Bits, done on the Godot engine. Uh, you can pick it up for about $17.99 US. What is it? Defend against waves of alien attackers in this innovative roguelike survival miner. Dig for resources. Choose from powerful upgrade paths. Is there enough time to mine a little deeper and get back to defend yourself before the monsters attack your dome? Question mark? Well, uh, the devs send us some keys on Curator Connect to find out. So, Pedro, did, did you diggy diggy hole? Uh, I, I, I did my best dwarf impersonation and uh, was immediately slapped across the head and told to stop it. Uh, the <laughs> uh, Doomkeeper uh, launches out of the box on both this uh, box with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and uh, 6700 XT. Um, on the deck, also out of the box, uh, it V-syncs correctly to whatever refresh rate you happen to have by default. Uh, a very smooth, ex- uh, like space exploration-y type music uh, for the quiet bits and like an action horror blend for when the shadow monsters attack like they are right now if you're looking at the video um you know the it, it, I, the soundtrack i really really liked it the graphics are hipster pixel but they're not terrible they're perfectly serviceable uh the um dual shock and the dual sense as well as the controls on the deck also work perfect out of the box though it only has symbols for the um xbox slash steam deck so that's all you get as for the fun admittedly i expected to not like it quite as much as i did because I looked at the trailer, it's like, oh yeah, it's one of those games that gives you nowhere near enough time to explore and makes you come back um, to fight every couple of minutes. And look at this crazy yes. fuck. Oh yeah, man, so <laughs> yeah. I'm basically wow. taking Dangerous. all of them because I looked at the time, it's like, oh, I got plenty of time. So, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got and- lucky, is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, correct, uh, basically. Um, Yes, that is a correct assessment as to what you're doing, but they actually double down on that particular mechanic. You can't carry a lot of, like, ore or water or cobalt or whatever at once at the start of each run. You need to upgrade your jetpack so that you don't get slowed down. Uh, So the need to come back quickly to pew-pew the enemies away uh, lines up perfectly with your weight limit. As soon as you have that reached that weight limit, you go, oh, I guess I should just go back anyway and just be ready for when the wave comes. And that works surprisingly well. Okay, sometimes you need to drop like one or two bits uh, to pick up some speed because you're running out of time. Uh, but instead of feeling like a detriment, it it this doubling down on that particular mechanic fe- feels like it complements the sense of dread that the monsters might break through if you're not there. It's... I hit... Ha- I, I expected to hate the primary loop, but I don't. I really don't. It seems um, really well paced to emphasize exactly the kind of gameplay that they're after. They had the vision that they wanted players to manage things 
the way that you're kind of forced to manage and it works it works really well it doesn't let you um sleep on the job you have to be on the ball and you're literally dropped on the map and left to figure things out for yourself with no text on screen right off the bat and it doesn't punish the player anywhere near as hard as other roguelikes do so as far as i'm concerned it gets four chairs <laughs> all right well on fedora 35 64 bit well it's fedora because i got kernel 6.0 and uh some pulse audio stuff instead of pipe wire but whatever <laughs> um yeah uh along with the r9 3900x and the gtx 1080 ti launch out of the box your options for resolution are full screen or drag resolution but it does perform well at uhd it is a pixel game after all the controls are reasonably mapped as pedro mentioned it is xbox prompts only i do like the soundtrack as well it is some very well designed beep boops and i when i got into the caves it's like ooh spooky music um and yeah it was not uh, I, I was jamming out to it the entire time. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, the, the the graphics are simple but effective. You got like your three minerals that you're collecting. Uh, you have your dude, you have rocks, and then you have the monsters. Uh, all very clearly what they're supposed to be. So no confusion there. Fun-wise, yeah, like Pedro, I fully expected to hate this game, but I gotta say, the core gameplay loop is pretty solid, and it got me hooked. Dig around for stuff, upgrade your dome, your drill, and your dude so you can die less quickly when monsters come a-knocking on the dome. It's pretty simple, but simple doesn't mean ineffective. Um, it's also pretty good game design, because it you really feel that choice when, like, that timer is going out. And you got, like, a shit ton of aura. You're like, oh, do I need that upgrade? Oh, I'll be able to fight this faster. Oh, but I really need to get back there or else I'm going to fucking die. Once you uh, once you unlock the ability to heal, it's a little better. But those healing uh, resources are pretty rare. And, uh, yeah, you definitely feel the pressure the entire time. It's all I love games that force you to make hard choices and make you live with them. And this game definitely does that. However, some gripes, not the biggest fan of making you spend your precious early resources on basic stuff like knowing how much health you have left or knowing how many, how close the monsters are. I kind of wish they gave that to you early off the bat, uh, instead of making you have to like go dig for some, some stuff just to, just to knock those upgrades off the bat. Uh, but you know what? Uh, other than that, I really didn't have too much in the way of gripes. The exploration feels good. Um, you have yeah the the thirty seconds or whatever is just enough time to get you in trouble, um yep. and <laughs> yeah again it really really forces that hard decision making like oh do I want especially with the upgrades oh do I want to increase my dome reliability oh if I upgrade my drill then I'll be able to get through all these blocks faster if I upgrade my jetpack then I can get more resources and so on and so forth there's gadgets you can find God Pedro you're so fucking greedy and you're so <laughs> fucking I lucky to take all of them. How how are you finding all these? I got nothing. I cleared out that entire fucking area and I got nothing. God damn it. I'm going to give this game three chairs. I'm running out of time. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, over here on Debian testing, which is like 11 with a bonus soda, NVIDIA 3060, 1928 Sword Ripper. It's a good old game. Happy to say everything worked out of the box. Full screen windowed. Yeah, choose your own adventure with the resolution stuff. But who liked Dune 2? Huh? Because this this is Dune 2, kids. I mean, it's resource management with combat skill trees tossed in. If that's your gem, you're going to love the hell out of Doom Keeper. Doom Keeper. Dome Keeper. <laughs> Doom Keeper. <laughs> Not to be confused with Biodome Keeper. Completely different game, plus a lot more polished. Sure. It's an addictive game loop, as Jordan said, man. That, like the mining mixed with tower defense, and you just have to constantly contend with that ever ticking baddie countdown timer. Once you unlock it, that is, to what oh, Pedro. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Three chairs up there still. Why? Why do you like three chairs? No, I, 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 I don't. It's polluting the screen. Fine. <laughs> Audio listeners, my apologies. Uh, um, the more resources you try to recover, unlike Pedro, I was not trying to get them all at one time. And also to what Jordan said, uh, I didn't find that many at one time. The slower you go upwards, and this is an interesting mechanic because you know you do need all the resources, but you got to weigh it. Like, do I need them right now? Can I wait? Or can I like even hold off to the point of getting smacked around on the dome, take a couple of hits, get them up there? Do you need to heal the base? It's that constant race against the clock. It's kind of fun. Mechanics like that can add some genuine tension to an otherwise like monotonous game loop. This doesn't feel monotonous at all. And I like that you're forced to up upgrade in order to survive. You have to. It's just a matter of life in this. And those upgrades, really well balanced. Um, you can even get like a little digging buddy. I got a drillbert, 
but he's a bit wee on the narcoleptic side, but you can upgrade him as well. There's teleports for getting, you know, resources up top. There's elevators and all this thing. Those are balanced too. They got their upsides and downsides. And, you know, I got to say, man, I, the only thing I'd really want to see in this is like safe states. I talked about it in the pre-pre super chosen because I got shit to do and you just can't save like right then hit pause, hit save and pick back up. I understand there's other ways to get around that, but I don't want to start back from square one every time I sit down and maybe an option to slow down the monster nanny bar. That'd be kind of nice, but dome keeper, it fits in the, I need something to do simulator. It does, but it's not that, you know, Stardew Valley, sit back, relax, you know, something to do with city skylines. This is more like, do you need, uh, you need to like tracking four or five things while two other things are going on simulator, something to do simulator, you know, uh, it keeps you busy instead of being busy work itself. And I don't know how many times I'm going to come back to it since I don't like starting back all the way at square one, but damn, I had a good time and damn, it's nice and addictive. Mm. And, uh, I gotta admit there's something awfully therapeutic about strip mining. You know, you put on, you know, mm. Captain Planet in the background and you go to it's, it's 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 the bubble wrap thing. You just got to like clear that sheet of bubble wrap. Yeah, yeah I got to say solid three all. chairs on that. <laughs> no surprises there. Um, yeah, that's probably the one mechanic that I'd want. Um, maybe a little more time because, you know, I think. Or, or guys, something to like influence that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because uh, I think like, it defaults on easy and that's what it's playing. I was like, why would you? And you, you check in the forums and I think rightfully so. People are asking for a more easy mode. Which I get, which I get. I wouldn't mind just, I would like more time to build my base. I think that's kind of what I'm at, you know, more time to collect resources. But then again, it does such a good job of balancing that line of resource management versus what you can actually upgrade in the base that keeps that tension constant, yeah. which wouldn't be there if that was the case. And, you know, I yeah. get it, you know? It's yeah. really well done because they managed yeah no i like the first run uh i managed to successfully get it all the way to the end scenario when you get the big artifact and just as you're about to lose because as soon as you get the artifact and you get it into the base uh the timer starts going a lot quicker down and then you get all of the high-end monsters just rushing you i'm like oh shit i'm fucked but just as you're about to die the artifact comes out and it saves you it's like ah so that's intentional mm -hmm. gotcha <laughs> but it works really well it's it, up to that point whenever the monsters came it was always a struggle it's like okay i gotta do really well otherwise the dome is completely fucked uh and i'm going to lose but it's just enough time that you get down in the mines to get the iron and the water and the cobalt to just See, you had a different experience thing. than Jordan and I because <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason you, you were very you, research yeah, rich. You, uh yeah like went right into the mother load like that one hole that you got I was like that would maybe have been my first 30 minutes that, yeah that, <laughs> that, that, was, that was like the sum total of like several trips for yeah. me so like yeah no but it's it no it like just to reiterate what people are saying here super tightly designed game loop really really well done really really yeah it's just it's it's a solid game maybe a little pricey for what it for what you get but like 1799 uh regional pricing is not an effect at 1799 acadian canadian uh 1790 it was yes i, I guess 2099 yeah. canadian Oh, oh, so yeah, it's 1799 Canadian. Uh, US, yeah. yeah, it's uh, 1799 pounds as well, but I uh, typed in the dollar. Ah, <laughs> there we <oops>. go. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, so 20 bucks is a little pricey. I might wait for it to go on sale or show up in a bundle. Well, it does it's seem like it's finally it. getting some content. I did a little bit of research and people were really upset when it first released. Uh, one, that they pulled the demo. There, mm. used, there used to be a demo and uh, I saw a lot of complaints of like, well, if you played the demo, you played the entire game. And, uh, and there wasn't much in the way of content updates over the demo, but that does seem to be being remedied. Like there mm -hmm. is updates and content and all that. And I mean, there's currently a DLC and of course you get the soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. And whenever you finish a level, you unlock new levels and there's like three different sizes of levels and there's four different game modes you can unlock in total. So there, there's, there's like there's a, a lot. <laughs> there's like a sword dome too. I haven't figured out how yeah. to unlock that, but like, yeah. <laughs> Instead of having the laser on top, you have little spinny swords. And I'm going to be like, <laughs> perfectly serious with everyone. It, this is Steam Deck verified, so there is that. Yeah. But if you're watching the video, you probably aren't as kind of wired up as our audio listeners, you know, using, you know, your brain meets to imagine this. Because like when I, I'm sitting watching the video, I'm like, it doesn't convey the 
the tension. Urgency, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it, 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 it's, it's really one of those things where you feel it as like the clock ticks. Down and you're making and, those decisions as you're slowly flying up. You're like, fuck it. I got to drop some of these men. We're not going to make it, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your, your, your guy moves like so frustratingly slow. You're just like, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. And as, as the game progresses, you're going deeper and deeper and your, your trips back up have like less and less margin for error. Yeah. It's, it's it's pretty good. It's very, a good very time. tightly yeah, well very, very very well designed. Very game. well done. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, we have another we have another person going through our review archives in uh sending us some feedback in the hate mail segment. So uh yeah, welcome. We're flashing back to episode two twenty something, two twenty six I think. It's the end. And uh, for once, uh, uh, very happy to see that a, a game finally got the approval of uh, the three of us. Uh, That's those are why rare. we do that. Because <laughs> every now and then, like we slog through baby's first game, or just I didn't care about this game, or hey, buy this, and you you run into the Hollow Knights every now and then. Yeah. That 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 one was uh, very very positively surprising for everyone. So that's very good. Mm. Uh, if you agree, or you happen to disagree, or you have any questions, anything you'd I'm like to add, I, I am looking for it. Uh, <laughs> upside down a gun. <laughs> yeah, there turn, you go. Turn that's the second one. <laughs> yeah, t- t- turn it. Turn a Gundam. A Gundam. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Okay. If you have no idea what your uh, what that was about, uh, you should watch us live. Uh, we go live uh, around uh, eight thirty on Saturdays, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So tune in around that time. That's um, one thirty a.m. in the uh, <laughs> GMTs. So keep that in mind. But uh, if you can't catch us live and you're just watching after the show, but you want to contribute, by all means, LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. Some caveats at the top. You may want to read those. Don't include URLs. Otherwise, the spam golem's just going to nom your message. That That's just how it goes. <laughs> so ah! there you go. Upside down. <laughs> ah! or, h- how, do you, how do you pronounce that letter? I, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> That's the opposite of uh. <laughs> you know you, you know if, if you if you know how to pronounce upside down a send us some goddamn hate mail like Lenard did some about goddamn our goddamn hate mail yeah baby. yeah our, our our review about uh, Mechaboo this is this is back from episode two twenty seven and uh, they say well Mechazoo isn't Sonic the Hedgehog and while it may have some similarities it's doing its own thing the o- only the armadillo rules like Sonic at all the other animals control completely differently it doesn't need to control like Sonic because it isn't Sonic there's multiple different animals and the control scheme just has to fit those animals floaty control doesn't automatically mean bad you just need to get used to them and understand how the mechanics work just like any game yeah this is another one uh, where we have to like look back because like right? i genuinely don't remember <laughs> like the the, the the name mecha zoo is familiar but like that was five years ago man like, yeah we had to do that i mean but you know here's here's what happens like especially with games that never achieved any level of popularity like if you happen to stumble across it later on and whatever it was like in a 99p bundle or something like that you're like oh mm-hmm. hey what do i do the same thing i could like hey what did other people think about this game and especially if it turns out that you know if it's something that's god awful and you have horrible taste in games and ended up liking so you make excuses like floaty controls are okay then right into a show for a review that's six fucking years old you do you that's cool i mean it's okay to be wrong on the internet uh yeah no see uh in a precision platformer which basically your progress is dictated by your ability to hit the i don't enemies think anybody's and ever the enemies. accused a sonic game of being precision anything <laughs> well this isn't a sonic game man it's mecha zoo it's different yes. don't, oh, don't you know oh, okay <laughs> but uh, in sonic uh, i can imagine anyone would complain if you hit the jump button and it would take Sonic like half a second to actually get off his ass and jump. I think that would be a problem. And in a game that's trying to ape it, at least with one of the characters, Pedro, yes, Sonic is Floaty like means bad. coming up on 40. You got to give him a minute. <laughs> I mean, it's not. He's no oh, spring it, chicken oh, is that why? Is that why they replaced the CGI Sonic on the movie? Is because you, you that was teeth, real dude. Sonic. You was real. Teeth, dude. You Being teeth. in two movies with Jim Gary changes the motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Man, yeah, I, no. Uh, if you came to Linux Gamecast watch. looking for a confirmation bias, bad. No, <laughs> I, I, no. It it depends because sometimes your confirmation bias is validated, and we and we, we talk about that. Yeah, but uh, you know what? I, it still it warms my heart to this day on the um, YouTuber special uh, interfacing Linux. I did go watch all those if you want. The uh, I had a segment and I just called it confirmation bias, and it was a timestamp. 
And, you know, it was like, hey, you did, you did all right. You get up, like, fucked up and, like, spent money and bought worse or shit. And somebody just wrote, and, like, at times, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> That's somebody just being honest with the internet. That is like, hey, yeah. you know what? That's what I was here for. Fucking delivered. I'm out. Peace. <laughs> you don't get a lot of honest people no. nowadays. <laughs> Not on YouTube comments, man. Holy. No. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's this Mikaboo type stuff i'm like but hey if you like the game it's cool man how about you you, enjoy the game without uh, everyone else enjoying it too that's when when was the last time you left an angry youtube comment (laughs) never because i don't comment on youtube oh okay an angry comment on x hamster x hamster (laughs) like three three minutes ago okay (laughs) Oh, you've been doing it while we were recording? Naughty. <laughs> I, 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 I never stopped doing it, man. Listen, I do man, it he's got to make sure the internet's correct. I'm correcting people in porn comments? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> do you ever feel the need to, like, I mean, like, outside of this, we, we, we jump on each other during a show because that's part of doing the damn show. Yes. Um, but, like, do you feel that need to, like, well, actually, you know, yeah. tell some, you know? <laughs> yeah. Occasionally. Do you actually Depending on, on the it. things. Sometimes, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> IRL too, uh, which is interesting because someone will be saying something. It's like, actually, <laughs> well, like, so it it, 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 do- it doesn't help that when you work in a field where there is a lot of like nuance and technical discussion, mm-hmm. where you can say something and then it's like, well, that's not that's not a hundred percent right, and it may impact this discussion in some way, shape, or form. So it's like broad strokes. Absolutely, I'm with you. You want to get specifics? That's wrong. <laughs> I, uh, and like you, you, you calibrate for it, right? Like sometimes, yeah. sometimes you need to be hyper precise. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the area. That's not, it's not really my point. My point mm-hmm. is some other thing. I think I so. can look at it now. Like I look at it through a completely different lens because I've been there. It used to be like somebody would misspeak, especially like when they were doing a show, right? They would misspeak, but yeah, I knew what they fucking meant. Everybody knew what they fucking meant. And I'm like, oh yeah, I, all right. I know what you meant to say, but you were wrong and da, 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 da. now being on the other side of like you know what i fucking meant man i knew what i fucking meant like i thought about it like after i said it like too late now you're wrong or well i don't know excuse me I, I, I need to get back to my ex hamster oh, okay. because yeah. <laughs> you'll notice though we've had to disable the monitor for um <laughs> yeah no uh, that's that's why that monitor is way too spicy too man. spicy uh, <laughs> all right beautiful people that uh on that have fun with this youtube ads with all of our x hamster <laughs> references I'm sure maybe you... we'll get some maybe we'll get some ads for x hamster who knows ladies and gentlemen if you want to get in touch with me i'm just at ben stone on twitter at then on our federated timeline mass.linksteamcast.com people are popping over to that thing and uh joining and all that fun stuff and social media things i'm there doing the stuff you can always chat i'm easy to do Go to our IRC channel, head over to Twitch, or, um, yeah, Discord. I'm there, like, 13 days a week. It's kind of hot. I'm Jordan. If you want to talk to me, state something factually incorrect in the thread of a ex-hamster porn and video. Beat Pedro. And oh. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I will be I will be there to uh, talk to you. Or you could just follow me on Twitter, at the Burning Fool, or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And on that ex hamster note, uh, the command you're looking for there, Testament, is bang ass. Uh, n- not ass. Bang but ass. ass. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to bang my ass, uh, so to I speak, do. find me on Twitter <laughs> at unaccounted for. No promises, but you know, we can talk. <laughs> no loop. <laughs> Time for some credits. Ah. <laughs> uh, Adequately? No. Not true <laughs> at all. Bored on a line. Bored on a line yeah. entertaining. <laughs> R- just bare, barely, barely crossing over. We gotta think. Our advisors, we got Omegas and our therapist. Oh, Omegas, yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're killing me. Yep. Uh, we got our executive producers Barbara Ramps, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kahaku, Yorsh, Pebble, Tomaj. Hey, did we think of our new patrons this week? 
Uh, no, we, we actually we totally spaced on that. Hey, I want to think <laughs> Jalad, yes, Darmok, that Tradaga, and all that fun stuff. Biatko, D Spec Twelve, and of course Tree Slot, who uh, is yep. also a Twitch sub that joined us uh, to play Strike Medias. There you go. Ah. Nice. We we got to thank Sea Monsters, Renaud, Ryder, Trud, Vernanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, Death Deathnotes, Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romeo. Well, I hope. Oh, there's Jello Dragon right there. We're back. Yeah. Xanthorus yeah, Gaming, Cheesy Bacon, Svi, and all of hope. And Jello. Yay. Uh, Jello exactly, is actually the yes, person who uh, sent some um, a hate mail last week about the pipe wire and the jack yeah. stuff. Yeah. And uh, he liked the reply so much, he decided, you know what? I'm going to put my and money where Yatko my mouth is. And spec 12. <laughs> we got all over Frank Fuck Buddies. The fine upstanding cannibals. Carl Mike, Arthur, and Luke's New World is Noctilus. Jan. Yeah, help. And Gametron. And you know what? No. Done. Brilliant we people. We finished it. Lovely people. Wow. We're going to get out of here. Dynafire. <laughs> See, I only hit that once this week. That's not too bad. Toodles. Toddles. Toodles? <laughs> Totters? Toodles. Potato. Whoa, toddlers? Potato no. toddles. <laughs> potato toddlers. Tater toddlers. Tater toddlers. Ooh. It's not, it's not cash patch kids. <laughs> They're tater toddlers. <laughs> Boil them, mash them, stick them in the stew. Five dudes. <laughs>